أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين A sociology lesson derived from the surah, from the lesson of Yusuf alayhi salam. Now, pay attention to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the story with a dream. Not so? Yeah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed to us that Yusuf saw the sun and the moon and 11 stars bowing down to him. And we said that the sun represented the, the mother and the moon represented the Father and the 11 stars represented thee. But we also said that there's a second view which states that the sun represented thee, Father, and the, 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 the moon represented thee, Mother, and the 11 stars represented the brothers. Let us study this dream based upon the second view. Let us say the sun represented the Father, and the moon represented the Mother, and the 11 stars represented the brothers. We learn a social lesson from this for those who ponder. And that social lesson is like this. When we look at the sun, when the sun is out, what do we feel? Warmth. We feel protected, isn't it? Do we feel scared like we feel at night? When the sun is out, people sleep? People sleep? In the Arabian Peninsula. What do people do when the sun is out? They earn, isn't it? They work and they earn, right or wrong? Right, let us look at a father in the home. When the father is at home, do we not feel safe? Do we, is there not earning that's taking place? Yeah, there's earning that takes place in the home. Do we not feel the warmth of the father at home? Yeah? When the sun is out, where are the stars? They're there, but they're not seen, isn't it? When the father's at home, are the children always running around the father? They're mostly around the mother, isn't it? Now let's look at the moon. The moon is serene, isn't it? It's beautiful to look at, isn't it? Right? Let's look at the mother in the home. A mother in the home, isn't she a means of peace in the home? Right? Doesn't she look after the sanctity of the home? Right? Isn't she, doesn't she illuminate the home? Isn't, isn't she serene and nice to look at? Right? Right? And where are the stars when the moon is out? They're twinkling, isn't it? They are all around the, the moon, isn't it? Right? Where are the children in reference to the mother? Do they spend the day with the father or with the mother? They spend the day with the mother, subhanAllah. Right? The moon takes its light from the sun. So the more effective the father in the home, the more effective the mother in the home. Right? That's what we learn. Right? Remember, this dream was interpreted, it was inter uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us that the sun represented this and the moon represented that. So if the moon takes its light from the sun, we understand from this that the more effective the father in the home, the more effective the mother in the home. Isn't it? Did we ever think of it this way? Let me tell you another point. What happens if the moon decides to be the sun and the sun decides to be the moon? What happens? You have an, an eclipse, isn't it? You have an, what happens? What happened? You have Qiyamah. Well, we might learn that just now. What happens when the sun wants to be the moon and the moon wants to be the sun? You have an, an eclipse, a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse. And when the father wants to be the mother in the house and the mother wants to be the father in the house, you will experience an eclipse as well, but a social eclipse. That is called a social eclipse. And this is what teaches us the importance of everybody playing their own role. And when an eclipse happens, 
We are the stars. They know where to be seen, right? When a social eclipse happens in the home, the children suffer the most. It's the children who suffer the most. And we learn this from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those who ponder, for those who deliberate, for those who study the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِنُّهَا أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ أَفَلَا تَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs and commands our intellect and says, do you not think? Do you not remember? Do you not ponder? So take from this epic journey, this epic lesson, and understand how relevant the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in our lives. Right? I told you at the beginning, that what I want from us firstly is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you learned, alhamdulillah, I hope you did. And if you didn't, forgive me, I tried. But the main thing is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the other objectives I set for you is to inculcate within yourselves a love to ponder over the verses of the Quran. From today, make sure that just as you have time to read the Quran generally, set time to ponder over the verses even if it's one verse a day even if it's just one verse in the day and spend that day thinking of the verses and what the verse means and how you can apply it in your life and how many lessons you can learn from it